Hi, this is Congressman Randy Nagabauer. Welcome to the Empowerment Project. The founders of this country intended for America to be a nation of empowerment, where people are free to work hard, enjoy the fruits of their labor, as well as a nation where you are personally responsible for your own destiny. Each week, I sit down with policymakers to discuss ways we can make America less dependent on the federal government. With me today is Ryan Ellis, Tax Policy Director with Americans for Tax Reform. Ryan, thanks for being with us today. It's great to be here. You know, Ryan, one of the things that's looming here is if Congress doesn't take some action, we could experience one of the largest tax increases in the history of this country, and it's a big number, but $3.9 trillion. Uh, but, you know, what does that mean to families and, and small businesses across the, the country if Congress doesn't act? Well, if Congress doesn't act, as you say, Congressman, um, taxes will be going up for everybody starting in January. It's not just for rich people. It's not just for people that might not be you or might not be your neighbors. It's you, it's your neighbors, it's everybody. I'll give you a small example of that. <clears throat> the lowest tax bracket people start paying taxes at is a 10% bracket. That's what you pay on your first dollar of taxable income. If Congress does nothing, which is seemingly what they're going to do before this election, nothing, then that 10% tax bracket will instead be a 15% tax bracket. So that's a huge spike in taxes on your very first dollar of income. What does it do to small business owners? Well, small businesses aren't organized like large corporations are. Small businesses generally pay their taxes on the personal tax forms of their owners. So when you raise tax rates on the owners, you are in fact raising tax rates on those small businesses. And it turns out that a, a majority, a clear majority, of small business profits in America are earned by owners who themselves earn at least $200,000 per year. So that means that when tax rates go up on those owners, you're really raising the tax rate on all small business profits of any real size uh, in the United States. Yeah, because out of that, uh, not all of that money is, is salary that the business owner is taking. He's actually, or she is putting that money back into the com company. That's right. The owner has to pay taxes whether they're taking the money out or whether they're reinvesting that money in the business. And this is something that people say, well, you know, you say there's a looming tax increase. We're talking about January 1st. Uh, this will start reflecting on paychecks. In fact, we're recording this on, on uh, Wednesday. Tomorrow, Thursday, is 100 days exactly until the largest tax increase in American history happens on January 1st. We only have 100 days until all of these tax increases hit investors, small business owners, families with children, up and down the board. One of the things that uh, bothers me a lot about the pending, uh, pen, pending tax increases is the death tax and how onerous and egregious that is uh, and how it impacts a lot of uh, the small businesses all across the country, particularly in my congressional district, because these are some of the businesses that provide good jobs in the communities, but if for some reason the founder passes away, some of these businesses have to be liquidated uh, or have to borrow a bunch of money to be able to, to pay the taxes on that. That's right. It's important that people understand that the most rich people in the country do not in fact pay the death tax. If you come from a very rich family or you're somebody who's been fortunate enough to acquire a lot of wealth. You can also hire accountants, you can hire lawyers, you can set up trusts, do certain things with charitable arrangements, insurance arrangements. The death tax really hits family farms and small businesses that are just successful enough to have paid the death tax when they die, but not so successful that they were able to do all of these avoidance techniques prior to the owner, owner dying. So that loops in a lot of your land-rich family farms that don't feel rich and it loops in a lot of your small businesses that were built over maybe a couple of generations and end because the death tax bill comes due. You know, one of the things that we hear from people in the district and all across the country now is just a, this is a period of uncertainty. and how, how important it is for businesses and families to have some certainty about what the taxes are going to be? It's absolutely critical. If you're a small business owner and you have to make decisions that how am I going to allocate capital in my business over the next five to ten years, uh, you have to have some degree of certainty that the tax system, as well as the regulatory system, as well as what government spending is going to be, is going to be something constant. There's always variables in life, but you would hope that at least the tax system that you're working under isn't going to be one of those variables. And what happens when a business owner doesn't have that confidence is that they go into a complete freeze and a lock, and they say, you know what, I'm not going to allocate this capital, I'm not going to buy any new plant and equipment, I'm not going to create any new jobs. I'm not going to open up that new 
storefront that I was planning on opening up because it's too risky, there's too many variables out there, and I just can't handle it. Ryan, thank you so much for bringing uh, this to our attention, and hopefully uh, in the next 100 days, Congress will do the right thing, and that is to give the American taxpayers uh, the relief that they deserve so we can create certainty. Again, thank you. My special guest today has been Ryan Ellis. Uh, he's with the Americans for Tax Reform. Thanks for joining us today. If you'd like to learn more about the Empowerment Project, I encourage you to visit my website at randy.house.gov and click on the Empowerment button. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Randy Nagabauer, and this has been the Empowerment Project.